Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now yesterday I did a video about why Russia doesn't really care who wins the US presidential election. But today I'm going to focus on what they'll have to encounter should the laughing hyena or Kamala Harris, as she's better known, becomes the US president. Now the opening day of the US Democratic Party convention has provided insight into the key issues that the party is focused on in its bid to have its candidate elected to the presidency. It also shown clearly what Russia's probable focus should be if the current vice president Kamala Harris becomes the next president of the United States. Now the focus of the first day of the convention was to assess how the Machiavellian shadow figures in the Democratic power elite, allegedly their Obama and their close associates, who are the driving force behind the scenes, would be able to mitigate the impact of the controversies surrounding the de facto violent removal from Joe Biden in the presidential race. Now, the imposition of Kamala Harris into the presidential race as a result of a palace coup will not be seen as a significant shift in policy from the current president, particularly in terms of foreign policy and the role of the executive branch. Though it's unclear how much of the future policy of Kamala Harris will differ, if any, from that of the current president, rather those that, who start the teleprompter for him and then tell him when to take his medication and then instruct others to do the dirty job of changing his soiled diapers. However, the key takeaway from Biden's speech was that it served as a political testament, in which he detailed his so-called list of achievements and expressed confidence that the new young generation, represented by a 59-year-old Harris, just about retired, from whom he had paved the way, would continue to proudly uphold the principles of American exceptionalism. Biden explicitly stated that Harris would continue the work of the pair during their four-year tenure, which included international and foreign policy, and of course, the relations or lack of them with Russia. Now, it's notable that in his speech at the Democratic Party convention in 2020, when he was nominated as a presidential candidate, he made one single reference to Russia. And this likely, or should I say hopefully, his final speech at the Democratic Party convention was to Biden devoted a significant portion of his remarks to Russia, urging Ms. Harris and the American people to continue fighting against Russia. Funny, I seem to remember that the US continues to claim it's not at war with Russia and it's just the Ukraine defending itself with some help from the US and NATO. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, which is full of wonderful articles that you can read and enjoy at your leisure. Now, you can do this by making a small donation that's done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I thank all of you now for just watching this video. Now in his speech, or if you can call his incoherent ramblings and rant a speech, he in particular referenced the words of the, the renowned American statesman or Henry Kissinger, who observed that Europe's never looked at Russia without fear since Napoleon Bonaparte in the 19th century. He also highlighted the unification of NATO to combat Russian aggression and support Ukraine as significant accomplishments. He emphasised that Kamala Harris will never bow to Putin in Russia. Now, I noticed that Biden didn't also mention that very famous phrase of Henry Kissinger when he said, it's far more dangerous to be a friend of the United States than it is its enemy. He also failed to take into account the action of a certain and infamous Mr. Schickelgruber, who was an Austrian painter from Graz, who actually assembled the largest land army ever for Operation Barbarossa in 1941, which resulted in the defeat of fascism, but the deaths of 30 million Soviet people. But he was chased all the way back to Berlin, just like Napoleon was to Paris. Both Napoleon and Schickelgru of failures don't seem to deter the US neocons of both parties who are hell-bent on war with Russia. Now, given Biden's long history of espousing a hostile stance towards Russia and the fact he wants to have trouble, he 
via evidence of the Nord Stream pipeline threats, which were then carried out, and the military and economic assistance he continues to pour into Ukraine. Harris's election would be a likely result in a significant escalation of tensions with Russia. I mean, she's already expressed a firm anti-Russian position, suggesting that she would intensify the current confrontation with Russia to a greater extent than previously anticipated. I mean, Harris was selected by the deep state puppeteers because she's the ideal vacuous entity. What goes in comes out if somewhat incoherently and in itself is empty platitudes, sound bites and cliches, but that's what they want. I mean, they're defended by the media. In fact, if you can make any sense of any of the utterances of Kamala Harris, you need to stop taking copious quantities of hallucinogenic drugs. Now, it's worth noting that despite her lack of prominence on this issue, Kamala Harris has consistently articulated her stance on Russia and the conflict. Well, she's read a few statements. In particular, when she met with the draft-dodging G.I. Joe fancy dress-wearing Kiev cokehead and alleged UK Ukraine President Alensky on six occasions, representing the United States at the main anti-Russian events like the Munich NATO conference and the laughable security conference in Switzerland. At these events, she declared unwavering support for Kiev, spouting as long as it takes, without actually specifying what that means. Furthermore, she's frequently accused Russia and President Putin of various offences including the murder of the Western NGO finance puppet Alexei Navalny, Navalny and warned of potential consequences for his not-so-sad death. Now, it's not worthy that Harris has advocated for anti-Russian sanctions, saying they should be imposed on Russia just because it exists. You know? I mean, should Harris become president, the role and influence of her advisors on defence and uh, international issues will now increase significantly. And it's interesting to see who's likely to be on the list of matters of war and peace for the not-so-talented Kamala Harris. Now, from what I understand, and I've read a fair bit, the Harris's principal advisors on the matter of defence and international affairs are a guy, a guy called Philip Gordon and a woman called Rebecca Lisner. Gordon served as a national security advisor under Clinton and Obama, indicating a consistent approach to foreign policy that aligns with the Atlanticist perspective and seriously hates Russia. Lesnar was instrumental in the formulation of the US national security strategy published at the outset of the Biden administration. So what is Lesnar's view of Russia? Well, she used to say that Russia represents a major and immediate threat to a free and open international system. It violates the fundamental principles of the international order. In one of our published articles, she states that Russia's proxy war in Ukraine has already demonstrated that it has both the intent and capability to challenge the United States in all zones while the US still lacks the capability to respond effectively. In another article, Revelation Wars, listener, provides the insights into Kamala Harris's perspective on international policy direction, given her role in developing these strategies. She says, it's imperative that the US grand strategy is rethought in the context of the ongoing war in the Ukraine, rising tensions with China. Historically, military interventions have played an important role in shaping the U.S. grand strategy. So this delusional Harris, then, in the, more, the mold of Victoria, the effect that he knew Newland is a major advisor. Now, if anybody had any doubts what's going to happen to Russian-American relations if Harris becomes president, I'd recommend reading those quotes again at your leisure. It's on my website, so please do. Now, for Russia, this signifies that the American elites, irrespective of their political affiliation, are nuts. They perceive Russia as a primary adversary and are prepared to take any action, including military intervention or a preemptive strike, to neutralise this so-called and perceived threat. For Russia, it's important to recognise that the situation is not going to return to a state of calm and normal normalcy. It's important to recognise that this is not a coincidence, that we're at a pivotal point where the empire of lies sees its dying and it's fighting for its life. For Russia, the answer is clear. 
Its entire policy and specific actions must be based on the understanding that whoever holds the US presidency, the chancellor in Germany, the chairmanship or the secretarial role in the Western organization, Russia main, must maintain its strength, unity and honesty. So Russia needs to work very closely with the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the BRICS and the Global South for a better way forward for the rest of the world. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and my website full of wonderful articles by clicking on the thanks button. Now, don't forget the comment section. Please do comment, do like and do interact. I love to hear from you. I love to interact with you. Now, take care.